Hello everyone. This session is about submandibular region part 2. The objectives are to learn about submandibular gland, its location, parts, relation, blood supply, nerve supply and clinical aspects, the submandibular ganglion, then distinguishing features of parotid submandibular and sublingual gland. So submandibular gland, it is a large salivary gland situated in the digastric triangle. The size is about walnut size and it weighs about 15 to 20 grams. The shape is J shaped. The coverings it is enclosed by two layers of deep cervical fascia. The deep cervical fascia splits to enclose this gland and it will be having the superficial layer and the deep layer. The superficial layer, it covers the inferior surface of the gland and it is attached to the base of the mandible. The deep layer or the deep lamina of the fascia, it covers the medial surface of the gland and it is attached to the mylohyoid line of the mandible. The parts, it is having two parts, the large superficial part and the smaller deep part. Both are continuous around the posterior border of the mylohyoid muscle and it is having two ends, the anterior end and the posterior end and three surfaces, inferior surface, medial surface and the lateral surface. So the superficial part, it fills the digastric triangle. So the submandibular gland is present in the digastric triangle. This way the digastric triangle is also known as the submandibular triangle. And it extends superiorly deep to the mandible up to the mylohyoid line. And inferiorly, it overlaps the stylohyoid and posterior belly of the digastric. So, which is one of the boundary of the digastric triangle. So, the relations of the inferior surface, it is related from outwards to inwards, the skin, platysma, cervical branch of facial nerve, the deep fascia, facial vein and the submandibular lymph nodes. So all these structures lies that is inferior surface below the inferior surface. The lateral surface is related to the submandibular fossa on the mandible. The insertion of the medial pterygoid muscle. The facial artery Then medial surface. So we have seen three surfaces, right? Inferior surface, lateral surface and medial surface. So we have seen the relations of inferior surface and the lateral surface. And in the medial surface, again in this, the anterior part, middle part and the posterior part. So the relations in the anterior part, it is related to mylohyoid muscle, submental branch of facial artery, mylohyoid nerve and vessels. So diagrammatically we can show the relations on the medial surface and the inferior surface through this line diagram. Then the relations in the middle part of the medial surface, it is related to hyoglossus stylo and 
the lingual artery and also the 12th cranial nerve and the posterior part. The posterior part of the medial surface related to the stylohyoid muscle, the styloglossus muscle, then glossopharyngeal nerve. So till now we have seen the relations of this superficial part. Now we will learn about the deep part. The deep part it is small in size compared to the superficial part and it lies deep to the mylohyoid muscle and superficial to the hyoglossus and the styloglossus. So it is lying in between the mylohyoid muscle and also the hyoglossus and the styloglossus muscle. Above it is related to the lingual nerve with the submandibular ganglion. Below it is related to hypoglossal nerve. Posteriorly it is continuous with the superficial part around the posterior border of the mylohyoid. So we have seen the mylohyoid muscle it is divides the gland into superficial and the deep part. So the superficial and the deep part are continuous with each other at the posterior border of the mylohyoid. Anteriorly it extends up to the posterior end of the sublingual gland. So it is present in between the mylohyoid and hyoglossus muscle. So laterally it is related to mylohyoid muscle and medially it is related to the hyoglossal muscle. So next the blood supply. It is supplied by the facial artery and the vein drains into common facial vein and lingual vein. The lymphatic drainage into the submandibular lymph nodes. The nerve supply it is supplied by branches of the submandibular ganglion. The branches conveys the secretomotor fibers, the sensory fibers from the lingual nerve and the vasomotor sympathetic fibers from the plexus on the facial artery. So the secretomotor supply is through the submandibular ganglion, right? So the secretomotor fibers, it passes from the superior salivatory nucleus, passes to the facial nerve, then cauda tympani nerve and the lingual nerve, then enters the submandibular ganglion. So from the ganglion, the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers supply the gland. Development, it develops during 4th to 6th weeks of gestation and it grows as outgrowths from the endodermal lining of the floor of the mouth at the alveolingual sulcus. The cells of secretory end pieces attain maturity during last two months of gestation. Next, we will discuss about the submandibular duct. So the submandibular duct, it is thin walled. It is also known as Wharton's duct. It measures about 5 cm long, emerges at the anterior end of the deep part of the gland. It passes on the iogloss muscle between the lingual nerve and hypoglossal nerve. So it is crossed by lingual nerve and turns medial to it. So here in this diagram you can observe the lingual nerve and the duct is crossing the lingual nerve and it terminates into the floor of the mouth on the summit of the sublingual papillae at the base of the frindlum of the tongue. So now the submandibular ganglion. It is a parasympathetic peripheral ganglion and it is a relay station for the secretomotor fibers to the submandibular and 
sublingual gland. Topographically, it is related to the lingual nerve but functionally connected to the carda tympani nerve. Roots, it is having three roots. The sensory root through the lingual nerve. The sympathetic root derived from the plexus around the facial artery and the secretomotor root so they enters the submandibular ganglia and from there it supplies the glands through the lingual nerve. So the secretomotor pathway, the secretomotor fibers arises from the superior salivary nucleus and it passes through facial nerve, carda tympani nerve and the lingual nerve. Then the nerve reaches the submandibular ganglion. So the fibers relay in the ganglion. After that, the fibers emerges to supply the submandibular gland. The postganglionic fibers. So the fibers arising from the ganglion. So the fibers which are reaching the glands are, are the preganglionic fibers. And the fibers emerging out from the ganglion are the postganglionic fibers. So, the postganglionic fibers for the submandibular gland reach the gland through five or six branches from the ganglion. But for the postganglionic fibers for the sublingual glands, re enter the lingual nerve through the anterior root and travel to the gland through the distal part of the lingual nerve. So, that's how the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland they are supplied by the secretomotor pathway through the submandibular ganglion. So diagrammatically we can represent the secretomotor pathway uh, in this way that is the simple line diagram. So the branches we have seen before that is to the submandibular gland directly the branch arises from the postganglionic fibers from the ganglion whereas for the sublingual gland through the lingual nerve, the secretory motor fibers reaches. Clinical anatomy. The carda tympani nerve supplying the secretory motor fibers to the submandibular and sublingual glands lies medial to the spine of the sphenoid. Injury to the spine affects the nerve and there will be loss of secretion from these glands. So, submandibular gland can be manually palpated by putting one finger within the mouth and one finger outside in relation to the position of the gland. So, that is how we can manually palpate the submandibular gland. And the calculus, uh, they are more common in submandibular gland because the sharp bends of Wharton's duct at the posterior border of mylohyoid muscle allows the stasis of saliva. So that favors the formation of the salivary stones. So excision of the submandibular gland for calculus or tumor is done by an incision below the angle of the jaw. That is because above that the marginal mandibular branch of facial nerve will be present. So to preserve the marginal mandibular branch of facial nerve the incision should be done below the angle of the jaw. The inflammation of the submandibular gland is known as sialadenitis. So now we have learnt about all the three major salivary glands that is parotid, submandibular and sublingual. So now we will see the distinguishing features between these three glands. So location the parotid gland is present near the ear, submandibular gland is present below the mandible and sublingual gland is present below the tongue. So development, the parotid gland is developed from the ectodermal origin whereas the submandibular and the sublingual develops endodermally. Then size, the parotid gland is the largest size and it is of about that is 25 gram. The submandibular gland is smaller compared to that of the parotid gland and weighs about 10 to 20 gram. The sublingual gland is the smallest 
it weighs about 3 to 4 grams. The shape, the parotid gland is pyramidal in shape. The subpandular gland is J-shaped and sublingual gland is almond shape. The duct, the duct of the parotid gland is called Stenson's duct. The submandibular duct is also known as Wharton's duct. And the sublingual duct is known as ducts of Ravenous. Uh, it is having 10 to 15 ducts, right? So one among them is a bigger that is called as Bartholin's duct. So that will be draining into the joining the submandibular duct. And the Stenson's duct opens into the vestibule of oral cavity opposite the second upper molar tooth. Whereas the Wharton's duct open in the floor of oral cavity proper on summit of sublingual papilla at the side of frenulum of the tongue. The sublingual ducts opens in the floor of the oral cavity proper on the sublingual fold. The secretor motor nerve supply for the parotid gland is through lesser petrosal nerve. The submandibular and sublingual gland is through the cauda tympani nerve. The preganglionic fibers arise from the inferior salivary nucleus for the parotid gland whereas from the superior salivary nucleus to the submandibular and sublingual gland. The postganglionic fibers arise from the otic ganglion for parotid gland and for submandibular and sublingual it arises from the submandibular ganglion. The nature of secretion, the parotid gland secretes the serous variety. So that's why it's also known as serous salivary gland. Then submandibular gland, it is a mixed variety having both serous and mucous secretion and the sublingual is the mucous gland. So the questions for assignment, the short is say, the first question is describe the location, parts, relation, blood supply, nerve supply of the submandibular gland. Mention its clinical aspects. Submandibular ganglion. Third question is mention the distinguishing features between the three major salivary glands. Short answers. Submandibular duct. Mention the secretomotor supply of submandibular salivary gland and submandibular ganglion. So submandibular ganglion, they can ask uh, both for short essay and short answers. So another clinical based question. A patient is diagnosed with cancer of the tongue. The lesion was on the dorsum of the tongue close to its lateral border. Where does all the lymph from cancerous lesion drain? Which other parts have to be removed during the surgery to remove the lesion? So that completes the submandibular region. So in the part 1, we have learnt about the suprahyoid muscles and the sublingual gland. And in the part, we have learnt about submandibular gland, submandibular ganglion and the distinguishing features of the three major salivary glands. Thank you.